Hello, very exciting parcel arrived for me today. I've got this beautiful book by Kate Rebecca Leach or uh, Esoldo Design. She's known on Instagram and social media. Definitely check her out, she's a fantastic artist. And I've been looking forward to getting this book for a while. So um, it's kind of a very brief flick through it. Um, I'm not going to show you too much because you should buy the book, it's wonderful. Um, and then I'm going to have a little go at one of the projects in it. So, got loads of information in here and what is abstract art, some stuff about materials, um, different colour palettes, goes through different techniques, watercolour techniques. Um, like loads of different ways of water, making marks and using your watercolour and different different tips and, and things so loads of sort of basic information to get you stuck into some of the projects that are in the latter half of the book so that's um, beginning and then all of this section is different projects that you can do um, ranging from quite straightforward to much more complex stuff like these houses um, so yeah I don't want to show you too much because I'd feel bad but the one I'm going to have a go at today is this loose stripes um, gives you the list of materials um, goes through sort of possible colour choices. You're using um, sort of mauves, purples, pinks. But I have this little Prima watercolour set in blues and greens. Um, only she suggests using quite a limited colour palette, so I'm going to use this because it's all similar colours. A little swatch sheet there. Um, and I'm hoping that will go well with the gold that she's using as an embellishment as well. So, yeah. She uses three colours. I might try and limit mine as well. Maybe stick to a more blue palette than, than green. Go nicely with the gold. Um, goes through it all step by step. Different with little tips along the way as well. Um, so I'm going to get this little bulldog clip, hopefully that will hold it down. I'm going to have to put this out of frame because I don't have enough room. And we will get started. I've got my watercolour paper. Um, this is the Windsor & Newton 25% cotton, 300 GSM cold pressed. Um, it's quite nice to have a bit of cotton in it because it will take the, the water a bit better. Oh, just knocked my camera, that's good. Um, I've got a range of brushes. Um, this is a Windsor and Newton size 4 um, and these are all Da Vinci brushes, different sizes and I don't know if you can see any of that. But for some reason that's a size 2 and that's also a size 2. I think it's because of the type of brush they are but to me that's more like a size 10 or 12 or something. But that's what I'll be using. Uh, I need to wet my palette. I think maybe mix up some um, the first step is doing some quite large sort of stripe washes across the page. Um, so I might need to mix up some quantities. Uh, 
Uh, oh, it's light blue. Oh, oh, stay put. Try not to mix more of that as I go. But, um, some of this very dark, almost Payne's greyish sort of blue. On a sort of greeny, greeny blue. Mm. This one's quite nice. I might put it where that green already is, just to get a bit more of that colour in there. See a bit of. Yep. We'll see how that works. And it doesn't matter if there's variations if I have to mix it again, because that'll just. I think that'll add to it. This is the set, the uh, currents, the watercolour confections by the Art Philosophy or Prima. Right, uh, let's start by masking your page. I've done that. She uses quite large masking tape. That's the biggest I had um, as washi tape. Uh, wash a layer of paint in band across the sheet to create your first stripe and continue with these stripes walk, working down the page when you're happy with the colours let the first layer dry um, tip keep your stripes uneven and organic the variation adds visual interest oh, I can make it a mess already um, let's start with a darker one at the top I made that too too large, but and I'm gonna add some more pigment to the top so then get a bit of a gradient going on. Just remove some moisture from the bottom because it's pooling up. And she's got some sort of petal shaped patterns. Come on. Oh, very drippy brush. Um, A lot of uh, water needed for this sort of technique lets the the paints flow a bit a bit better. Oh, I'm gonna have to go over all of that now, aren't I? Oh, keep that bottom bit wet. Sorry, my hand keeps going over the frame because I need more water on my brush. And some of these are a bit pale again, so I'm going to add some Oh, I should mix some green in with that, that's no good Bleed a little bit into the layer above, and some rougher, a bit more green tape. That looks too similar to that one. I think I'm going to add some more of the. Well, they call it jellyfish. But
Mm -hmm. Need a dry brush, I think, to get a bit of texture on the bottom of this. Dry enough. I might add Back. some water blooms. Too much water. Mm. What now? Getting more small variation in this. I don't know if just using three colours is quite what I'm after. I'm going to use this jellyfish blue on its own. Um, Keep it wet so I can get it flowing into the next layer. Uh, which I'm going to go back to that dark, dark, dark blue. It's not coming out all that dark, but I suppose that's good because we need to create some sort of interest over this. Can I draw some to connect these up? this dark blue into here. Probably get some blooms because I'm adding it a bit late but that's fine. I'm going to make this bottom bit darker this time. back to that turquoise blue mm, a very pale wash I think no it's not pale at all is it okay, it's nice and close Fill in that space a little bit. Um, where is it? Back to this green. Not just touch them together in a few places. Help them move that move out a bit. Mm. 
blue as well to put on sections of the tree. So I'm trying to make some interesting textures. I would add salt, but I think we're going to be drawing over the top of it. it might um, might make that a bit tricky. Not too happy with this section up here. I think I should have done something else with it, but can't mess with it now. It's too late. So I'm gonna just gonna add some. Leave that. I'm gonna pause and I'm trying to get this dry. I might have to. I, don't know. I was thinking I'd use the hair dryer, but it's quite wet. I don't want to blow around the. Thinking I'm done, and then they're slightly just adding more. <laughs> right, can I get this uh, get this dry? Right, so I've got that all dry. Um, next stage is wet on dry. Uh, if you rush, do your second layer of paint on top of the dry first layer. This is your chance to add extra colour to build contrast. Um, so she's done sort of shapes and dots and. Of extras to add a bit more interest. So I think my sleeves up, I've got a bit of a habit. Yep. I'm going to very quick. I might just do some large filled in I'm trying to keep this random, but getting a bit uniform over here for a minute. watercolour tends to do. These are drying so much paler than uh, how they're going down on the page. I might add a, another layer to them and maybe just at the top where the, the underneath layer is a bit darker. A 
have some more interest to these bits, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna repeat the shape. nicer already I think I'm not feeling a hundred percent happy with it after just doing the first letter layer but I think this is a sort of trust the process kind of project definitely builds really let me add a little Interesting, maybe that's quite a big block, so I'm going to try and do something to create some interest there. Get this go back to this jellyfish color. Um, I don't like that dark, more water. Add some hollow circles. Vary the sizes of it. Build that one in. Whoops, Daisy. Definitely not perfect circles, but I don't think perfect circles is what I want here, so that's fine. I'm trying to think about the other embellishments I'm going to add with um, gold ink, uh, white, white pen, I think the wrong colour again. Uh, and a black fine liner, which is what she uses. Um, I think she uses a Unibal Signo gel pen. I do not get on with gel pens at all, and I'm going to use a fine white Posca 1M. don't know how people get such nice results with those gel pens, I just find them, they sort of stick and I don't get a consistent line or they let too much of the paint colour through so it's not, not all that vibrant. Loads of people use them very successfully, so I'm sure it's a me issue, but just not not my preferred thing to use. Mm. So get this slightly bigger brush. I'm just going to do some light dots on here with. Hmm. What colour? I'll just use the same colour actually.
hold the brush up right, otherwise I'm getting not quite the shape I want. I need to keep it wet because I'm getting jaggedy edges. It's all learning, isn't it? Just draw some lines across here. I'm going to use a thin, really thin brush for that. Um, what colour? Use the bigger brush to mix it, can't we? It makes more sense. Yeah, I don't want them very pronounced. Maybe I'll do the same with some verticals. Mm, not sure what to do with this bit. Mm. I'll leave that plain and do some sort of bold gold something or other on there. And then I'm going to. and do some very fine you know what, I might even get a finer brush let's go this is a size zero let's see if I've got the patience for this vary the thickness because I've muffed up a bit there. Make it look a bit barcodey maybe. That's an adjective, right? Barcodey. Might uh, just pause while I finish that row because that's going to be very tedious. Um, oh, sorry. I finished those lines at the bottom and I've dried this all. Uh, I hope you can see that. Um, and now I'm going to click on some gold. Need that. Put my lid on before I spill it. Using the Winsor & Newton gold ink. That little box. 
Uh, the pigment separates quite a lot, so you need to give it a good, good shake. Um, can I? Oh, can't open it. That's good. There we go. I will get a bit in the lid because it's easier to work with and keep keep the pigment mixed in. Oh, I've got a Right, to start, I'm going to put gold circles in the middle of these. It's a really vibrant gold, it's uh, my favourite and it's the one she recommends in the book. She, like my cat's mother. Getting these central most of the time, am I? Well, it's deliberate, it's the effect I want. <laughs> Decide if I want um, gold dots in there. Why not? Do three small dots in each. No, maybe not. Different sizes. I'll play it by ear. Smudged. Right. Do need the water after all. Clean my brush. Right. I think. I'm going to put some, I'm going to line the inside of these circles. I'll get started, but then probably pause to do the rest because it's going to take a while and it's not going to be very fun to watch, I wouldn't have thought. I'm just going to do that on the insides of the circles. Yeah, I'll pause while I finish that. Okay, yeah, so that's those circles done. Um, I think I might put two gold borders on the bottom and tops of these bits. Let's try and uh, try and separate out these sort of lines that I've added in the middle, vertical lines. Um, Follow the uh, line I created with the paint. Keep it nice and wibbly. Technical term, wibbly. Mm. 
it's a nice size. It's a shake and get some more ink. And see how it's, I don't know if you can, see how it's separated already. Um, and I think I might do some little circles on this bit. Try and mirror this bit slightly. No, is this brush too big? Oops, I think that's good. But again, I think this might take a while, so I'm just going to pause while I finish this. There it goes, that's all dry. You can see the sparkle on that hopefully. And now I've got a PC 1.7mm white Posca and a selection of Rotary Tiki Graphic. So I've got a 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and a 0.5. And I'm going to turn this round so I can kind of start with this bit. And that's what I want to do with with these. making them a bit more interesting. Um, so, then you've seen what I'm doing. I'll pause and finish that. There we go, so that's that section done. I go like how that looks. Um, regret this, but I think I'm just going to do lots of little white dots in this these turquoise sections. that. Again, not the most exciting so I will pause the recording again once while I finish that. There we go, that's all dotted. And what I also want to do is add some black lines in between these sections. So I've got the 0.1 I'm keep them quite fine. Okay, that's going to take a while, so let's see what I'm doing. I'm just going to, I'll be right back. Okay, that's uh, I think added a bit of interest to that. Um, I think on this, I might want to make a. I'm going to put black dots in the middle and then go around the outside with the white. So, 
Um, use a 0.5, I think. That's the look I'm going for. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just pause and get that done. There we go. That's all done. I shine off the gold. Um, I'm gonna go back to the 0 0.1. Oh, um, and do vertical lines to fill in this space. decide what to do with this and um, I think I might just do some white dots over the top but I'm right, going to use this one and do lots of tiny dots within each dot which is going to take a very long time I think see what I'm kind of doing but I'm going to pause while I finish that. Right that was fairly time consuming but I quite like the effect that I've got. Um, I'm going to get my 0.3 and just do some dots in between these little vertical lines. And hmm, not entirely sure what to do on this one. Maybe some white lines in between uh, vertical white lines in between the Horizontal blue lines. Finish my sentence, that helped, won't it? Maybe 
maybe we could alternate between black and yeah, I'm gonna do that with some 0.3. I've got some bits up here that I missed. gonna pause again while I do this so if you're watching me doing a hundred lines there we go that done um, and I think I'm gonna do black circles inside these uh, with the 0.3 again apart from these smaller ones I use the 0.1 Again, I'll pause while I uh, get that done. So, there's that bit done. Oh, you can see the, really see the gold there. It's nice. Um, and I just need to do something with this. And I think I might put white dots down alternating columns. So, okay. Start on this one. And this one, do this. We've got this sort of effect going on. So I will be back in a second when that's done. There we go, that's that bottom section done. It's not giving me sea urchin vibes. Um, and I think that's done. So I'm going to do the fun bit now and peel off this tape. Hope I don't damage the paper. Shh. I'll keep that flat. I can reuse that. There we go. All done. I'm quite pleased with how that turned out. I don't think it's quite as organic as uh, Rebecca's piece. It's got the sort of geode vibes. It's very sort of natural, um, but still very very pleased with that. And I like the blue and gold combo. So I will put a link to. A soldo design on Instagram and I bought the book on Amazon so I'll put that link in the description as well in case you want to pick it up. Oh, my camera again. There we go. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again soon.